Motorsport TV Live, brought to you by Motorsport Tickets, the dedicated motorsport experiences provider. Hello and welcome to Motorsport TV Live. I'm Diana Binks. Coming up today... We'll be looking back at the season's big moments from up and down the Formula One grid and asking the question who's best equipped to take on Mercedes and Red Bull next season. We'll have insight from the technical editor of Autosport, Jake boxall Leg, and we'll pick out some memorable moments from the likes of Fernando Alonso and George Russell. That's all coming up right here on Motorsport TV Live. And what a season it's been for Formula One. So much has happened, and not just in the Drivers' Championship, but in many ways other battles from up and down the grid. Joining me to pick through the major moments that took place throughout the season is Autosports technical editor Jake, Bo Jake boxhall Leg. And Jay, thank Jake, thank you very much for joining us here today. If we can start with the Constructors' Championship, we've got a lot, I'm sure, to talk about. Um, Ferrari and McLaren, that battle really mid-season was, was superb. It really was, yeah. You saw Ferrari and then McLaren taking the initiative at different stages of the season. Uh, McLaren obviously began very, very strongly. Then Ferrari took the initiative going into the summer break, but McLaren came back really, really strongly. One in Monza got that one two result and then Ferrari turned it around new power unit update of course and that carried them forward to third in in the constructors Carlos Sainz and and um, Charles Leclerc were they a good pairing do you think I think it's one of the best driving pairings on the grid to be honest with you and we saw at the start of the season particularly Sainz just sort of bedding himself in and getting used to the Ferrari and its specific demands and obviously Leclerc been with the team for a couple of seasons now he knows exactly what to expect from the car but then you saw that parity as the season went on um and yeah it's certainly one of the most competitive lineups that we've got on the grid science is so so consistent and leclerc he, you know he's had a few ups and downs this season but generally you know he's been been very very good he had that pole position in monaco of course that he couldn't take but um you know, had he been able to make that, then that could have been a victory for Ferrari this season. It is still ultimately another winless season, but it's been a much, much better turnaround compared to last year. Who do you think has done enough to be called the lead driver? Oh, good question. <laughs> um, well, obviously, you'd have, looking at the numbers, um, science, you know, was better this season in terms of points. But I think in terms of performances overall, um, you'd have to say that Leclerc had the biggest peaks let's say um so i think i think it's still everything to play for and i think leclerc is still their man but you know science is is pushing him all the way i mean they are both superb drivers but for charles leclerc to take the the win in in monaco how would you sort of describe his season it, it starts off really really well and he's been able to take advantage of all of the advantages that for that ferrari has um and let's compare it to last year as well. The car was very, very good on the circuits where power wasn't so much of an issue, but because of the the sort of neutering of their engine, if you like, it was really, really struggling on the, the faster circuits. Um, but then you get into this season, it's kept a lot of the good parts of the car and become much faster in a straight line. And Leclerc's just been able to take advantage of that. And in Monaco, he was fantastic until he hit the wall in qualifying. Uh, and couldn't take his his, his top uh, his pole position. Um, he knows where the strengths of that car lie. And going into 2022, everybody's going to sort of have to turn it around and work out where the strengths of the car again are because they're completely new. Um, but you know, he's got the intelligence to to do that off the bat. I mean, Ferrari and McLaren, it was so close between the two of them. And we know that, you know, McLaren were pushing incredibly hard. There was a lot of highs and lows uh, between both of them. So almost disappointing to see McLaren end up in fourth. Yeah, as you say, it was very, very late in the day. Uh, it was so, so close between them. But obviously, McLaren sort of had to start off by getting used to a brand new power unit because obviously 
Um, they'd switched from Renault to Mercedes. Um, every team at the start of the season had allocation of tokens that they could use on developing their 2020 cars for 2021. And McLaren had to use both of those on the new powertrain. So it couldn't really use it for anything performance related other than bedding that engine in. But the way they kicked off the season was so, so good. It was excellent. Um, Lando Norris, obviously, with the podium um, off the bat. And then moving into the season, Norris was in insanely strong in the first part of the season. Towards the end of the year, it did slip away as Ferrari got stronger and stronger. Um, and it looked like McLaren had sort of resign themselves to perhaps focusing on next year but fourth is still excellent considering where they were a couple of years ago and of course Mac mclaren scored the one two at monza which was uh, just a huge high for the team it was an excellent result and to go into that race and control it in the way that they did against you know, Mercedes and Red Bull, which have been the two former teams of the season, it was just such a fantastic result. And they did it purely on merit as well. Um, and, you know, we see those pictures there with Valtteri Bottas in third. He had an excellent race to get through the, the pack, but he came up to the two McLarens and he just, he didn't have anything for them. So it was just such a strong team result. And yeah, I believe the only one, two of the season. Yes. And you, which was incredible. But just a, a final thought on McLaren, really, and Lando Norris. I mean, he has had a pretty superb year, um, really shown his maturity and talent coming through this year. So we've seen a real different side to him. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, it's his first year in Formula One. It was very, very strong um, again. But, you know, there were a few reliability problems. And obviously, when it's your first season, you're you're naturally predisposed to making mistakes. That's just the way it is. But the way he's grown in the last two seasons has been phenomenal. Um, and I was lucky enough to sort of see him work in Formula Two, sort of relatively closely. And he just has this very analytical approach, this very sort of natural control of a car. And he's been able to build on that in Formula One. He's got this sort of fantastic technical feedback that he's building up now. Um, and he's really becoming a team leader as well. And for him to beat Daniel Ricciardo, a driver that we consider very, very good in the way that he did over the course of the season. That's, you know, it's it's really, really fantastic for, for him. Yeah, and of course, Daniel Ricciardo taking that win from McLaren. I mean, Lando Norris must have been pretty devastated that he was not the driver to take that first win, but a great result for Daniel, who's, who has to be fair to say has had a, a, a difficult season. Yeah, he has. I think he just hasn't quite got the car the way he wants it. You know, we know Daniel Ricciardo. He's the last guy on the brakes every time you get into a corner. And the McLaren doesn't quite set up for that. Um, you know, you need a lot more sort of front-end stability when you're working with that car. And so Ricciardo had to get used to that. And it does require a different driving style to what he's used to. Uh, I think we've seen a number of drivers switch teams over the off-season, need to change their style a little bit. That's not taking anything away from, you know, the job that Norris did over the season. Uh, he was absolutely fantastic. But Ricardo did take a lot longer than I think he expected to learn the car. Um, but, you know, every, next year, everybody's going to be sort of on a level playing field. So um, hopefully we'll sort of see him get back into form next year. And talking about winning drivers, um, the other driver, of course, Esteban Ocon took, took a win, which, again, superb for him. But he has quietly been... Um, beavering away on track and making progress the whole time. Um, testament to him. Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, last year was difficult because he'd had a year out, year on the bench and had to sort of get back into that racing mentality, if you like. Um, this season, the Alpine team, it's, it's blown hot and cold over the season, really. It's been so, so difficult to determine sort of where they are relative to pace because there's some weekends where they're the best midfield runner, and there's some weekends where they're struggling to get out of Q1. Um, so it, it's been a really difficult season. But for Ocon to come through and win that Hungarian Grand Prix, defend from Sebastian Vettel for basically the entirety of the race, you know, a man who's won numerous Formula One races in the past, it was just so, you know, veteran like in his composure. He was just able to keep him at bay and just drive a normal race the pressure didn't get to him at all 
And in that race as well, you know, Fernando Alonso did his bit by putting on a fantastic defensive display. Um, I think that was voted uh, FIA's moment of the year, actually, at the awards gala last night. Um, his defence from Lewis Hamilton, which, you know, effectively uh, helped Ocon seal the seal the victory. And I think uh, Ocon returned the favour a little bit in, in Qatar that helped Alonso get the podium. So um really really good teamwork for for them they work very well together um which is which is great to see how beneficial has fernando alonso been to esteban ocon um with his development as a driver i mean fernando we know still wants to win he's still got the desire to do all that but he also seems to have be very impressed with esteban ocon and want to sort of see him progress as well yeah, certainly. I think I don't think it's any harm to have a two-time world champion next to you. <laughs> um, and arguably, you could argue that Fernando Alonso should have won more across his career. He's so versatile, incredibly quick. Again, maybe it took him a couple of races to sort of get back into the F1 spirit and back up to speed. But, you know, towards the end of the season, he was sort of back at his best. And it's really great to see him back up and firing again and being able to sort of not quite be a mentor as such, but, you know, be somebody that Esteban Alcon can, can, can uh, measure himself up against. It's a, a really good sort of thing to have. And, you know, I don't know how long Alonso is going to sort of hang around in Formula One for, but, you know, after he's gone, um, Esteban will have that sort of wealth of knowledge that he's got from uh, being next to him in the team. And another standout driver that we need to talk about, of course, is, is George Russell, known as Mr. Saturday now. Um, but he's really, again, another driver that you can see the talent there that we've seen for years, getting nurtured, getting stronger and stronger. How would you describe his season? He's been fantastic, hasn't he? Um, the thing is, Williams has vastly improved their car over the last couple of seasons. You know, it's been a real nadir for the team. And Russell has had to sort of go through all of that, all of the qualifying at the back, all of the struggling to make out of Q, Q1. Um, and, you know, he, he's got his rewards this season. Um, obviously, his podium at Belgium was, you know, complete luck. But at the end, he, you know, he still put himself in that position to take it. And, and it was very well earned it's been a fantastic season for george um you know he's qualified so so well uh he's probably outshined the limits of what that williams should realistically be able to do which is the sign of a great driver um and when he goes to mercedes next year they're going to get somebody who's been through the worst of what f1 has to offer um but some of the best as well he's incredibly analytical he pushes the team around him very very hard but he pushes himself hard as well and that's i think something that mercedes should respond quite well to next year how much has george exceeded williams expectations do you think it's a good question um i think they knew that they were going to get somebody who was incredibly talented and um again he's another driver that in formula two i've seen work incredibly hard and pull late nights with his team to try and you know leave no stone unturned I think Williams knew that they were going to get that with, with with George, but I don't think they expected, you know, would have expected in their wildest dreams to this year have uh, got a podium and and for George to have been in the points, you know, more than once. Um, you know, it, it, it's been a development this season and Williams has done very, very well to sort of get out of this mire. But yeah, I think he must have exceeded some expectations for for sure. Hamilton has said that George Russell is a, is, a, is a future talent, future champion. Would you agree with that comment? I think so. I think if you look in the way that he works with the team, um, the performances that he's put together with Williams, it, it puts me in mind of uh, Alonso at Minardi in 2001, uh, 20 years ago, uh, where he was doing amazing things in a car that couldn't shouldn't have been been there. And, you know, George has been doing that over the past couple of years. And when he jumped into that Mercedes last year, he just showed that he was, you know, completely cut out for the for the top end of Formula One. So I think, you know, he gets the right opportunity in the right car, then, yeah, he can be uh, a champion a couple of times over, I think. And finally, Jake, how would you summarise this season? It has been... Uh, it, it transcends words, I think. It's been one of the best seasons that we've seen in a long time. Um, 
sometimes it's got toxic sometimes it's got been overwhelming um but it's just been i think a historic season for the championship um and we're going to see bits of 2021 played on highlights reels for the next 20, 30 years, uh, maybe longer. Um, it's just been one of those seasons that we'll look back at and think that was that was fantastic. Jake, thank you so much for that. Really interesting chatting to you today. We could have gone on for a long time, of course, but um, <laughs> we need to wrap it up there. But uh, thanks for taking the time to chat to us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's all we've got time for. Thanks to Jake Boxall Leg. I'm Diana Binks, and do remember to head over to Motorsport TV for more of our season reviews. Until next time, bye for now.